I collect vintage Star Wars playsets, but the problem is, how am I gonna display them? Right here. I'll show you what I just got and some other options that you can try, no matter what you collect. So let's go. Welcome back to the journey, and if you're new, I just went on a huge journey collecting all the Kenner Star Wars action figures made from 1977 to 1985, and in one of those episodes, I went through how I picked up my display case made by a company called Collector Displays, and I also did a full episode on me building it and stocking all my figures in it. And in my mind, the way that you display your collectibles is just as important as the items that you collect itself. And in this episode, we are gonna explore how hard it is, but how very important it is to display your playsets. And I'm gonna go through the process of picking the right display for me to show off my playsets in this run. Now, a lot of collectors have the same problem that I have. The first one being space and not enough of it. I don't have a huge room for my collectibles. And right now, most of them are being stored in a closet. I know that's horrible to display these beautiful vintage artifacts in a closet. And in my mind, that is just the wrong thing to do. I just moved from a huge studio space and now I'm doing the show from my small attic space in my home. And with that comes more freedom to shoot when I want, but also it's a tight space. And what I want to do is go over my options of how I want to display those play sets. And the first one is always the preferred one. Custom display cases that fit in your house. Making a custom look for what you're collecting is obviously the choice that I would want to go. Demoing a wall, building the space for what your collection is and will be, and also theming your room to that specific genre or making it look custom to what you want. There are a ton of people who have spent thousands on their caves and dens and people who have done it themselves to both save money and get it the way they want with no rush. And as for us mortals, we may have to go a different route. And that's because some of us don't have access to a full workshop with power tools due to lack of space or resources. We have to go the route of prefabricated or pre-built and assembled displays. And I have some top options that I've been looking at. And the first one comes via ModuCase. And there are several sites that sell these. And let's take a case module, the DF60, and do some price and delivery comparisons. And this single case module measures a depth of 23.62 inches, a width of 23.62 inches, and a height of 25.59 inches, precisely. First at a site called ModuSpace. Now this site operates out of Singapore and for the DF60 model, the price ranges from 220 to 247 US dollars for a single unit. If you order today, you won't get this until August or September of 2023. And if any of us know pre-order timelines, this can also mean January 2024 or beyond. And this price excludes shipping and international port fees. Then I found this same model at the Big Bad Toy Store site. And I had to look in their frequently asked questions to get an answer as to where they're located. And it's in Somerset, Wisconsin. Why is this so important for me or any collector? Well, I like to research companies that I do business with, especially if the business that I want to be doing hundreds or thousands of dollars in transactions over. I'm also going to research if they have any pending lawsuits and I'll check the Better Business Bureau or the affiliated Chamber of Commerce. The public information on this, yes, I do all of this and it's worth the extra half hour of research to do that stuff. So my only note to Big Bad Toy Store is to put the city and state you do business in on the about me section of your website so collectors can do this research on you without doing the extra click. It took a minute, but I knew to look in your FAQ section of your site. So on the big bad toy shop, this same DF60 module goes for $219.99, which is the same as the low quote from the Singapore Maju Space quote. But big bad toy shop offers a $4 flat rate shipping and if that's true and this is the case, then this option is the cheapest and the most convenient because you can get this item estimated to arrive in Q1 of 2023, which is pretty much now. The arrival date is just an estimate, but much better than the first shop in Singapore. Now on to a site called Sideshow. 
And this offers the case for the lowest price at 180 US dollars. And I've done business with Sideshow in the past, and my only critique is the delayed shipping times and false estimates in the shipping dates. But this is for the Hot Toys collectibles and not these cases. So take the estimate times I'm about to give you with a grain of salt. So if you get the case today, the estimates are April 2023 at the latest for shipping. And just for reference, the time I'm recording this video, it's the beginning of March 2023. With shipping, the grand total would be $213.56, and that's after tax. So if I was going to order this style case, I would most likely buy through Sideshow. And no, I'm not an affiliate, although I would totally be one if they're listening or watching but I doubt it. So am I going to get this one? I would love to, but no. And here's the main reason why. Although I think that Maji cases are the Lamborghinis of display cases, and one day for my collection room, or at least one wall or a small section of it, I would love to have these. But here are the main two reasons why I can't have these right now. And the reason one, price. Now, it's an investment to do any display items, and I think you should invest wisely in your displays. These are pretty pricey. And right now, I can't make that heavy of an investment into this type of display right now, as the price that I'm looking at is just for one shelving unit. And if I'm estimating right, I need to get roughly 16 shelving units at different sizes. So an estimated price just on the units alone would be $3,408. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Would it look killer? Heck yes. And let's go into the second reason why I can get these even if I wanted to. Right now, the space where I actually do my show and have my collection is too small. Now, this is going to change in the future when I'm going to go back to having a studio with more room for more stuff. So right now, the bigger option is unrealistic for me, although it's the nicest looking option. So next, I wanted to show you an alternate option that competes with this option. And it's something that I found on a site called Wayfair. And if you've ever shopped for furniture or home accessories online, this company pays to get the top slots on Google searches. So go ahead and try looking for a cabinet or couch online and see if they don't pop up first. Well, they have a unit called Series 93H Trophy Case. Now, price-wise, it is just as expensive as the Maju Case. And like the Maju Case, it allows you to set your own shelving, but it's an alternative setup. But let's go into what I really might do, and it's for way cheaper than the prices that I've shown so far. So first I was gonna do the fixed shelving route. And I love free floating shelves because it makes the wall look a lot cleaner. And since I have white walls and a white THX background thing going on, this would be ideal for me. But I can also find these in black if I wanna go with that color scheme. And measuring these shelves, let's take the depth at 9.25 inches of this shelf. Now, taking one of the deepest play sets, the Ewok Village, it's nine inches deep, so you won't have that much wiggle room, but it will fit. And to be honest, I am thinking about buying multiple shelving like this for my Ahsoka collection, for my mint on cards, and I may want to mount my collector display cases to the wall and right now I have them on a frame that has wheels and it's simply a wardrobe rack that I built, but you can get these in Amazon and in different colors. And I place links down in that description for everything I'm getting today. But floating shelves are great. And since I'm shooting a show, I want to be as minimalistic as possible to make it look great and put the emphasis on the toys and packaging and not on the furniture. Although you want the display to be as much of the spectacle and presentation to make your collection stand out and be taking as art and not just a set of toys or whatever you collect. So look for me getting these in a future episode and figuring out if I want to have my display case on the wall or attached to the wall with other shelves around it. And I think that look would be awesome. But I like things on wheels. It allows me to frame shots differently and it allows me to make the room more versatile so I can easily configure the room the way I want it. That brings us to this. I'm gonna do an experiment with this shelving unit right here inside this box. And here is why I decided to pick what's inside this box. It's on wheels so I can move it around. It's white so I can keep that same clean decor of my room. And it's big enough to fit the play sets I have so far. And I believe that right now is the best option for me in the small room that I have for the small budget that I have to do this right now. If I had a bigger room and a little bit bigger budget to build a proper film set, I totally would. But today I'm gonna see if this works 
And we're gonna do it all in this episode to see how it looks in the background of my YouTube channel. So I went to Amazon and I looked for free standing white shelves. So I found this unit right here. It's 13.5 inches in depth, so it fits all the play sets, but it's only 13.6 in height on the main shelves at least. So right now my Death Star space station and my Ewok village will have to live on the top shelf on the open space. So let's see how that looks. It's also metal, so it won't feel too cheap. It's foldable and on wheels, so I can move this around and store it if I ever move or put it into storage once I start building my studio. And I want it to live right here in this area over my shoulder so that way everyone can see it. And I'm also going to add LED lights to it. So I got these lights from Newer. They are cheap, versatile, and I've used this model of lights for years in my professional life as well as on this show. So for this one, I bought a clamp that can attach the shelf and hold the light and be hidden by the play sets. And again, all the things that I'm using in this video are listed in the description of this video. And now I guess it's time for the fun part of putting all my play sets on those shelves. And I collect these inside the box, so it's easier for me to display them. And I also have the majority of these play sets in acrylic cases. So there it is all displayed. And I think it looks pretty good considering the price that I paid for it and what I want to use it for, which is just a display inside my studio for my YouTube channel but I think these shelves are a great option if you don't have much room, you're on a budget, and if you need to make your shelves mobile and give you options to maneuver these around. So this is perfect for me and my room right now. If you like this content and want to make videos like these possible, please join the community on Patreon. Membership perks include early access to see videos, member-only episodes, extra entries into giveaways, member-only live streams, member shout-outs, and free digital downloads of my collector sheets and reference guides. Go to the link in the description to become a member of the Academy. So if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. That does support the channel. And please consider subscribing if you want to see more vintage and Star Wars collecting content from me. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. <laughs> Thanks, Evie. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video, or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.